Hello, um, Happy New Year. This is the end again um, in 2013. Today we're going to be talking about um, The Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. It's called um, The Outliers, like I have just said. And this is actually the second time I'm shooting this video because the first time I shot it went on very, very long simply because I love this book so much and I could not stop talking about it. But now I think I've given myself a week or two after having finished it. So things are not quite as um, recent and I can't remember every single chapter because I think I read it within the space of one day and basically tried to do the video the next day. So I remembered every single part and every single thing and it was still so quite, you know, so amazing. So now it's been a week and I think I just remember the things that were most important and they stuck out the most. And I hope that I can be um, a great guide on whether you should get this book or not. First of all, I have to explain why I read it. It was recommended to me by a friend of mine um, that has been recommending a lot of books lately. So there will be a lot of different kind of books that I'm reading that I would not have been reading in the past based on the fact that there's a new influence in terms of um, the kind of books that I read and um, the supply of them. <laughs> In any case, um, I got this book, um, it was actually um, it recommended to me based on the f on kind of my personality. I actually had this book, um, I got it six months ago and I decided to read it. The reason why I got it um, is because I'm, it's, 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 it's about success and I'm a very, um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a bit obsessive about um, high performance and high achievement and going further than you need to go or everybody else goes that's the kind of thing that um, always drives me and always inspires me so um, books like this are quite helpful to me initially when i read it i thought that um or when i initially got it i thought for some reason that it would be one of those motivational books but it's actually more about what the title says which is um stories of success but it's actually the secrets behind success but and not in a kind of motivational oh if you believe you'll get it thing well kind of but not really it's just why people succeed and you'll be very surprised as to the different reasons um, other than determination and hard work and genius that make people succeed it's actually about 10% um, ability and preparation and 90% luck and then the whole book basically illustrates why that is um, I will give you an example actually um, one of the most important parts of this book and I think the reason why it was also recommended to me is um, the 10,000 hour rule now the 10,000 hour rule basically um, stipulates that in ten, if you do something repeatedly for 10,000 hours, obviously with as much effort as you can put into it and as much brain power as you can put into it, by the 10,000 hours you are actually an expert now. You are considered an expert and you can speak as an, not like, you know, um, officially or anything like that, but you become an expert at whatever you do for 10,000 hours. Now. He starts off by, um, well, if you if you start off with that understanding, then you can understand where everything else comes in. Is that a tweet? Anyway, where everything else comes in. So, for example, there is, um, the example that I will give you is Bill Gates. Now, Bill Gates um, was born in 1953, I think. Yes. Um, so, basically, he did 10,000 hours of programming. Now, I say it's 10% like an... 90% um, no it's 10% preparation and 90% luck for for first of all he was lucky to even have done the 10,000 hours of program he was lucky to have gone to the school that he went to that had a computer in the 60s when no other school had a computer um, he was lucky that one of the students parents they um, could afford to give them time in the computer and, you know all this you, if you read it you'll know a bit more of the detail of how hard it is actually to have had 10,000 hours of programming by 1980 whatever so i think things like that um kind of give you an understanding that you know it's more about the opportunity and less about you actually um obviously you have to be ready for it but the book basically gives you a lot of examples of how many times people were simply born into the right circumstances or born into the right environment um for, uh, okay let me finish the example then. 
Yes. So he just was lucky that he went there. Um, he went to that primary school that had that. He went to a high school that was near university that allowed him to go there every weekend. He was lucky that he was at a near university that had 24-hour computer access and that he was able to um, use it at walk. He was walking distance from him, so he could walk there at 3 a.m. or something. So that means that he had a 10,000. You know, he had an advantage over anybody else that emerged um, in 1982 or 1980 something when the private um, computer was introduced to the world or you know the mini computer was introduced to the world so he was basically likely to have had his 10,000 hours by the age where he could seize the opportunity whereas had he been born earlier which is another thing in the book actually about even the day you the month you were born or the year you were born um, or the period you were born in gives you a huge opportunity in terms of um, any new technology or any new development in your field happening at the right time and you are just the right age. So basically in that example with Bill Gates, had he been um, born three years later, he would have been already been working for IBM or something and you know IBM didn't have time for the mini computer so his mind wouldn't even be able to process that whether he had 10,000 hours or not. So. Um, that's basically what the, the book shows you is that a lot of the time um, it's not trying to discount hard work or anything it's not trying to discount the opportunity it's just trying to show you that success comes from being ready for your opportunity and it just gives you many many different examples of that another cute example that it starts off with I don't want this video to be long so I'm just gonna um, another example is that you'll find that um, no, I don't think I should discuss that. You'll just read the book. Okay. So another thing that I really enjoyed, my favorite one, actually, is because it's something that I have been um, thinking about for the past few months, I think, um, or years even, I think, ever since I got interested in things like um, anthropology or different cultures or, you know, black consciousness, whatever. Um, cultural heritage, actually. What your culture determines... Um, about you, I guess, um, how it, how you were raised and how your environment is, how that determines whether you become successful or not. Um, an example, and I already tweeted about this, I really, really liked it a lot. If you follow me on Twitter, um, then you'll know that I spoke about this um, a few weeks ago. It's the fact, it's one of the, the it's, it's actually about the fact that um, the Koreans, the South Koreans probably had um, one of the highest plane crash incidences at the beginning of the um, businesses, Air, Air Korea or whatever. Um, and it actually pins it down to one very simple. I'm, I'm mentioning this because I love, love, love South Korean culture. I'm completely obsessed with it. I watch all the videos and the movies and I listen to the music and I'm like one step away from learning the language. That should be on the list of things I do this year. Ha. Anyway, yeah, so um, the interesting thing about the Korean thing is that they actually it was discovered by one of the sociologists that Malcolm Gladwell interviews in the book because like I said or I didn't say actually it's it's a lot of him speaking but a lot of him having gotten expertise from other people so he'll tell a story and then these experts that kind of explain why certain things happened or explain certain phenomenons and you know that sort of thing so um, in this case with the with the Korean thing it was discovered that they had all these plane crashes because Koreans have an HPI, high power index, I think, um, where they have a huge respect for authority. So as a result, flying a plane is actually not about expertise or how good you are. Obviously, that's for granted, but it's also about um, it's also about working as a team. So now you can't exactly work as a team if your culture has taught you repeatedly that anybody older than you or your senior, you can't really um, correct them or guide them. So as a result, you find a lot of the, on, in the black boxes of crashed plane, there was silence on the part of the co-pilot while the pilot was making huge mistakes. And this is the same thing you'll find in countries um, that have a high power index, I think. Um, so basically there's actually an inverse relationship between how many, no, no, no. Uh, <clears throat> direct correlation between how high your country takes authority or respect and how high your plane crashes are you know so it's quite interesting so now the, what they're doing is that um, when they train pilots in these countries they have to teach them to ignore what their culture has taught them which is to ignore um 
authority and you know the rules that your culture has set up for you so that's quite interesting um i'm, re I'm trying to remember my favorite favorite part of the book because it's already 10 minutes and no one wants to watch a 10 minute video um my favorite part of the book will have to have been um, the one that had to do with classism. Yes, that was my absolute favorite part. And I think that's what made me talk for so long in the last video, the last time I tried to shoot this. Um, I really, really, really enjoyed the fact that he pointed out um, a study that was done by someone called Terman, I think in the 20s or something. I can't remember, because it was quite a long time ago. What he did was he basically um, looked for the smartest kids in America in terms of IQ. So he would do an IQ test and then another IQ test and then another IQ. So basically the cream of the cream of the cream of the crop. So that was quite interesting. So what he did was he followed them throughout their whole life. So it was the longitudinal study. I think that's what it's called. I should know that. Anyway, um, so what he did was he followed them throughout their whole life and studied basically where they ended up so these are really smart kids from the age of probably five to maybe marriage and all that 30 something and he found some out some very interesting things first of all he found out that genius does not equal achievement because um he had expect and it was it's actually quite sad on his part because i think he had done this thing hoping that he would you know have noble laureates on his hands and you know oh i found them when they were five and you know no none of that happened none of them ended up winning any noble prizes none of them um achieved anything that he considered success which is like wow for, for someone with your iq he believed that you should be able to do anything that was really not the case um many of them just ended up being ordinary um married two kids one degree maybe some had two degrees okay cool half did not i think it was not it was probably half but it was quite a surprisingly high number ended up not even having degrees um some even were jobless and he was quite disappointed because i think he expected someone with the iqs that he got to be quite bright and that was actually not the case so um he, he pins it down to class actually and um, someone else did another study and noticed that the reason why i think these things happened was that the people that got degrees and all that had middle class parents the people that ended up not on that path did not have middle class parents, so they had working class parents. And then he, and then Malcolm um, brings in another expert into the story who now shows you the difference in parenting styles between middle class and working class parents and why the middle class parents tend to be more successful. So it's quite interesting. I really, really would love to talk and talk and talk about this. And I think I'm going to make a separate video about it because I love this book so much and it's just amazing i think it's really really amazing you should really give it a shot um please read it you will love it i loved it i couldn't put it down and it's a good way i think to start 2013 it's not an inspirational book by no means is it and it's, it's very fact-based it's very look this person got successful because they inherited a business fuck you know so doesn't mean you can do it you know that kind of thing it really puts you in a very realistic state of mind you know just you know what it shows you what you can and cannot do or what you need to be able to do in order to succeed but that's not the point of it but anyway um do get the book do follow me on twitter my name is sienda right as usual um check out my blog i wrote some very controversial or not so controversial <laughs> some interesting um posts um last year oh it's, it's already last year <laughs> No one was reading anything from last year. <laughs> anyway, so yes, um, do read, do check out my blog, um, do read my tweets or whatever. Enjoy your 2013. Please have a good year. Please read this book and bye.